If you could have heaven on earth, what would it look like? Would people live forever? Would everyone have enough to eat? And would you purge humanity to make it happen? Hello Funkers, Tony Funk here, and today we're going to talk about Tengoku Demaikyo, aka Heavenly Delusion, and break down why I think the calamity that destroyed civilization happened, and what I think director Shino's ultimate goals were in creating Takahara Academy. So join me in this spoiler-filled speculation and get to the bottom of what heaven on earth really is. Heavenly Delusion follows two parallel storylines. The first one we're introduced to follows a group of students living in a sealed indoor facility dubbed Heaven, who wonder if there's a world beyond the walls of their enclosure. The second storyline, however, follows characters Karuko and Maru on a journey to find Maru's doppelganger and give him an unknown medicine, all whilst fighting off gangs and man-eating monsters. Though these two stories start off unrelated to each other, they begin to slowly merge into one epic exploration of how society rebounds after a cataclysmic event. Eventually we learn that the first storyline happened 10 years before the second storyline, highlighting the sinister nature of the Calamity. Let's first analyze what we know about Takahara Academy's relationship to the Calamity. Takahara Academy consists of a group of highly gifted teens and preteens, similar to Xavier's school for gifted youngsters, all of whom are barred from seeing the outside world. Among them, Taro becomes the first one to succumb to an unknown disease that covers him with black marks, killing him shortly after. In chapter 15, we learn that the disease seems to have been a sort of anomaly, given that all the children are genetically modified to be immune to all diseases. This tells us that Takahara Academy is a breeding ground for superhuman children. Why then would Takahara be creating superhuman children in the first place though? A possible answer to this is how Takahara is referred to as heaven. Heaven is supposed to be a paradise, therefore implying that the creation of superhuman children is to create a heaven-like realm. Though initially it is implied that because they are not supposed to know about the outside world, heaven was supposed to exist within the confines of the academy. In reality, the students were being prepared for pickup day. Though it's still unclear what pickup day is supposed to be exactly, the students were to be taken out of the academy and either sacrificed to have their brains switched out with the staff, or maybe some were supposed to keep their original brains, and then could possibly be used later to usurp society and start a new heaven on earth. Evidence for this claim stems from the fact that the academy created super soldiers out of the DNA of Haruko for the sole purpose of sabotaging humanity's efforts to mitigate or deflect the asteroid, as seen in chapter 46. Because director Shino wanted the asteroid to impact Earth, we can only imply that Pickup Day would be a way to consolidate power by having an army of highly skilled and specialized children. The reason she wanted to weaken Earth's institutions first was because she knew that her goals would be easily thwarted by national governments and militaries. This is seen in Chapter 42 when the Japanese government confiscates the children and gives them new names in an attempt to prevent Shino from having further control over them. Okay, so Shino wants to be some kind of god for a new world order, but how exactly did she plan for this? I believe that at some point, Shino being a geneticist, discovered the DNA of an ancient Haruko. We know Haruko predate Takahara Academy because in chapter 45, Maru learns that the demon mummy in stasis came from the Edo period and was originally a demon-like monster. This could mean that either there were more preserved Haruko, or that Shino might have connections to the family that guards the demon mummy. I think either theories are likely. For one, why would there be only one Haruko? And secondly, because Shino has a striking resemblance to the family. And as an aside, so does Robin Inazaki. So assuming Shino received the DNA from a Haruko, she probably realized that they contain the genes to live forever given that they're unkillable by conventional means, and that they can remain in stasis for hundreds of years. This probably kicked off her quest to live forever and create half-human Haruko hybrids. Unbeknownst to her, however, similar to Tado and Kuku, Haruko-human hybrids are destined to become full Haruko through either illness or death. Not knowing this, she planned on taking over the immortal bodies of one or multiple of her students' bodies in order to achieve immortality. Now let's talk about the connection between Shino and Maru. At one point, Maru's first adoptive parent was murdered. Whether or not Shino murdered Maru's parent is irrelevant, but the reality is that Shino was the individual who taught Maru how to use his powers to kill Haruko. Since the Black Death, as I'm going to call it, only seemed to affect Haruko, Makura has to be one of them. In Chapter 42, we see that Makura is in fact Nata, who happened to have her body taken over by Shino. This explains why Makura also had one of the Takahara guns and knowledge on how to kill Haruko. After all, Nata is seen with the Super Beam in Chapter 43. She, also being a part of the original initiative to create Heaven on Earth, probably developed or knew someone who could create the antidote for the disease, hence why she gave it to Maru, and why she knew that Maru had a twin slash cloned brother. Now before I talk about what happened to the other students, I want to talk about the real Heaven. 
Though according to Chapter 35, Takahara Academy was supposed to be heaven on Earth, and later somehow spill out into the rest of the world, there's another heaven that has a role in the series. This heaven, as I'm calling it, seems to be the immortal realm where the children go once they've been turned to Haruko. The first time we see heaven is in Chapter 23, when Mimahime sees a vision of the future and is seen walking around a cave before seeing that one of the other students is with her and proceeds to hold hands with them. The second time we see heaven is in Chapter 41, when we see Nata trapped behind bars in the cave while she was unconscious and most likely about to die. Then in Chapter 49, after Cuckoo dies and becomes a fish, we see her exploring the same cave. This implies a level of immortality that may or may not go away after the Haruko had been killed by Mark. Now we must look at the fates of all the students as seen up until chapter 54, during Mara and Karuko's timeline. Kona becomes the bug Haruko that nearly kills Haruki, as evidenced by Mimahime's vision during chapter 34. Mimahime dies as Dr. Usami's final patient. The evidence for this is that Dr. Usami dies with the same button in chapter 22 that Mimahime gave Shiro in chapter 37. This in turn means that Dr. Usami is Shiro. Taka becomes the giant bird Haruko from Chapter 5, as evidenced by having the same attack when he fights Michika aka Takazuka in Chapter 50. This means that since Taka married Ansu in Chapter 49, he's against killing Anjulas, which means that Anzu turned into Anjulas. Another bit of evidence is in Chapter 52, when one of the unnamed ex-students says that Anzu is no longer here in reference to Anjulas. As for Cuckoo, she is seen becoming the fish in Chapter 52. Lima becomes a member of the Ministry of Reconstruction and is seen on the radio during Chapter 54. Hani is also seen with Lima as well. Nata, as we know, becomes Makura, who has her brain swapped with Shino. Omo becomes the Haruko that causes Karuko to hallucinate in Chapter 19, due to her already present hallucination powers. Now this leaves the Spider Haruko from Chapter 28 and the Barrier Haruko from Chapter 31. It's possible the Barrier Haruko is Mako slash Hori Sachio due to her telekinetic powers, and whoever the Spider Haruko was, was the mother of the freezing baby from Chapter 29. Now that all or most Haruko are accounted for, we can talk about Totori, who is also a Haruko as evidenced by Maru's death touch, realizing she had a core in Chapter 17. Now the reason she has a core is that she's Taka and Anzu's child as seen in Chapter 50. Also, Satora becomes Dr. Sawatari, as evidenced by the big scar on his head after the military takes over Takahara. So, now that we sorted the mess of Takahara Academy students and Haruko, and possibly uncovered Chino's original plans, what exactly are the themes of Heavenly Delusion? Well, considering that the storyline for Heavenly Delusion required being demystified before anything, I find it appropriate to explore the themes in a part 2 to keep my exploration of Heavenly Delusion succinct. So, stay tuned for part 2 where I explore the motif of hell with Karuko's gender dysphoria and sister complex tendencies, and then we'll explore what heaven means as symbolized by Tokyo's innocence and in the ways in which the Takahara students relate to each other. So for now, Funkers, Take care, and as always, I shall see yous down the road.